Hey, I'm Bob with Laguna Tools. If you're watching this video, it probably means you bought a Laguna IQ CNC uh, or you're really serious about buying one. This video is about what to do once the machine arrives. We're going to walk through step by step from when it gets unloaded all the way to where it's set up and tested. When the machine arrives with the trucking company, it's going to be delivered in most cases at what they call curbside. That means that they're going to t take it from the truck put it on the ground, it will be at the end of your driveway towards the street. It's your responsibility to get the machine into your shop. I'm using a floor jack to move the machine into the shop here. Uh, they're readily available at equipment rental places, or you can use several people. The machines are thoroughly tested before they leave our facility in California. Now, that doesn't mean things haven't gotten damaged in shipment. Before you accept the, the product from the trucking company, visibly inspect for any kind of damage on the outside that you can see. If you find some, note it on the bill of lading. If you could take pictures, that helps. Report that to Laguna Tools within 24 hours. Now, once you open the crate, if you find any damage, also note that, because we would know then that that was shipping damage. I just grabbed some standard tools that we might need to open the crate. There's a pry bar, a hammer, and some cutters to cut this band in. Once we get the strapping off, there's a series of screws around the base, and, and a cordless drill comes out real handy for that. All right, let's see if we can lift the top off. Looking good. Okay, I'm going to visually inspect it for any hidden damage. This looks really good. I don't see any problems. Now, remember, if you, if you see hidden damage, document it. Uh, make sure that you take pictures of it and report it to Laguna Tools within 24 hours. Now, I've got that done. Everything looks good. I'm going to cut these straps. The actually footprint of the frame is about 50 inches and my workbench that I decided to use is 48. So I put another piece on top uh, just to give me a little more room. Okay, and the footprint uh, across the front is about 31 and a half inches. Okay, I decided to use one of our Laguna workbenches to uh, put the machine on. Uh, it was a little bit larger than the top so I put an extra piece on top. Uh, this machine as it sits here is about 400 pounds so, so make sure that you select a sturdy bench. Okay, let's get rid of the rest of the packing materials. Before you go further here, let's just remove all these little wire ties that were put on there to secure things for shipping. And that looks pretty good. This is the electrical cabinet for the IQ. Now, uh, this happens to be for the IQ uh, HHC model, or the standard model. Uh, the IQ Pro is slightly different. It has a, a, a little bit different configuration. But now you can place these where you want. They have a fairly long cord. In my case, I prefer to have it because of the, my workbench configuration over in this area. My hand control is going to work off that. Also, I want to make sure that the e-stop is, is, is accessible. The cable to the control box, it, it has quite a lot of length on it. so. I can actually set it down here if I'd like. You just have to decide what makes the most sense for you. Be sure that e-stop e is accessible. Okay, let's finish unpacking. So we'll take this out. We'll set it over here. And we'll take this small box and set it over here. We'll get rid of our packing material. Before the machine was released from quality control, it had to have a performance test. And that's what this is. It's basically some sample cuts. The program that did this is, is in the machine control. We'll be able to actually run that program when we get the machine set up and make sure that it, everything is still correct. That, that lets us know nothing got damaged in shipping. All right, let's get this out of the way. All right, let's get rid of this packing material. Okay, let's open this first. This is, this is actually a pail and it's used to uh, contain water that's used for the liquid cool spindle. If you're in a cold environment, you can also put some antifreeze in there if you'd like. Let's see what else is in there because we, we put some things in there to store. This is a cable that connects your machine control to the handheld control. These are a series of clamps that we used uh, for fixed drink T-slot clamps. We'll set those up here. And this is actually a pump for the liquid cool spindle. Okay, let's open this little box. 
Okay, let's see what we've got, okay? There are wrenches to remove tools from the spindle. There's a router bit, there's a router bit, there's some Allen wrenches. Uh, here's an important part. This is a handheld control. And a handheld control will actually be connected to the control with this cable. Uh, we also have, this customer actually ordered uh, VCAR Pro, there's, so there's a VCAR Pro disc in there. There's also, uh, this is the puck that we use for tool touch off. This is a USB card for transferring files to the controller. And there's just an assortment of, of small router bits. And most likely when you purchase a machine, you bought one of the router bit package, a starter package, so those would also be included if you did that. Okay, we verify we have everything that was ordered, so we know all our, everything came correctly. Now let's start actually setting the machine up to run. Now, I like my control panel here, but I'm, I need to put a plug on it. So the next thing I'm going to do is move it up here where it's easier to access. All right. Okay, here's the electrical cord. Now you notice there's no plug on there, and we do that for a purpose. It depends on your setup. In our case, this is a 220 single phase machine, so that's ground in there, the two legs. So I'm going to strip those wires and put a little plug on, and I'll plug it into our power supply. Okay, we've got our plug on. We'll set this back on the floor. Or we'll keep it. So that's good. Now let's set up our uh, pump. Okay, the lid for the uh, water container has two holes in it. So the first thing I want to do is thread those hoses through those holes. And they're fairly tight, and that's to keep dirt out. Right. Then one of those we connect to the pump. And we've got this orange fitting and it's, you just push the hose in and it should lock in. If you try to pull it, it doesn't come out. If you need to release it, pull that top ring in and you'll be able to get that hose out. Okay, so now I take the bucket, I put water in it, okay? I put the pump inside. Yeah. This goes out here. And we snap the lid on. We put our pail underneath here just for convenience. Uh, we fill it up to about three fourths of the way. All right, we've got our lid on. We've got, and this, by the way, this is a cord. This is a 110 cord. You plug this into a 110 volt outlet, standard outlet or cord, and that's what powers the pump. This is the cable that connects the uh, handheld control. Now, they're, they're slightly different. The end with the bolts are little handles here, screws, goes on the handheld control. The ones with the snap go on the machine. So we'll sl slip that on there and it should snap into place. And you can see that it's snapped into place. So that's what retains that. Now we'll take this plug, we'll plug it into our handheld control, and then we'll tighten these screws. Okay, we're almost ready to power the machine up. Um, there's a little foam thing here. I'm just gonna wait till the machine's powered up so the spindle comes up. I, I don't wanna damage that. Okay, one last little step here is we wanna put this puck. This puck is used for touch off. So it's got a plug here. Just put that in, secure it with the nut. And that should go. And it's got uh, a magnet. It's actually got a magnet here so you can just hold it there while we're not using it. Okay, I think we're ready. We've got everything set up. Everything came out fine. Uh, There's no loose hardware, no damage to the machine. So I think we're ready to plug it in and, and start setting the machine up. First, I'm gonna release the e-stop. You just press it in and twist it. That comes out. And then I'm gonna turn the power switch to on. Now immediately you hear the fan running and the handheld control screen lights up and it says go to home and I hit OK. Now you'll see it. Now it goes up. Now what it's doing now is it's homing itself. Okay, we'll take that off. There's our spindle. As we go through this procedure, there's some fundamentals that you really need to understand, and home is one of them, okay? Now think about what happened. When I first turned it on, it said go to home, and I said okay. 
Always do that. Now, if you watched right after that, first it went up in Z and you saw this sensor light up. It went across to X and you saw this sensor light up. It went forward to Y and you saw that sensor light up. That means the machine is at a specific position. It's called the home position and it doesn't change. So if I come back two weeks from now and turn the machine on home, it's in the same position. That's how you get repeatability from day to day to day or from program to program. So that's a very important fundamental. Now that we have the machine homed, let's manually move it around, all right? I'm on the controller, I'm going to say Z minus. Z minus should move the spindle down, and you see it go down. Z plus makes it move up. So that's the Z axis, all right? Let's go to the next axis. Let's go to X. X plus makes it traverse across. X minus makes it come the other way. And then we have Y, and Y plus makes it go that way. Y minus the other way. So that's how we manually move the machine around. When I was manually uh, jogging the machine, you notice that each time I pushed the button, I held it down, and it continued to move. That's called a continuous mode, and you see that display there. Okay, but there's a mode button down here that also changes that. One of the choices is step. Step means it moves at a certain amount. A step is an amount. All right, those step distances are controlled by this button, the high-low button. You see high on the screen, you see low on the screen. If I have high selected and I hit, for instance, one of the buttons, it moves it uh, a half a millimeter, which is about 20 thousandths of an inch. If I have it set to low and hit the button, it moves it about a tenth of a millimeter or four thousandths of an inch. Now sometimes I want to move the machine a specific distance so what I'll do is I'll hit mode button again and that says distance so it says 100 which means a hundred millimeters alright so what I'll do is I'll hit OK that locks that in as that is what the distance is going to be and I'm going to hit Y plus and it moves the machine a hundred millimeters or roughly four inches. So those are the three modes for moving the machine around manually. Okay, I want to cut our test panel uh, to make sure the machine's set up correctly. So I've, I've got a quarter inch bit here, and this is a down shear bit. So if you twist it, it, it twists uh, opposite and up shear, drill bits and up shear, and that keeps from chipping the surface, and that's a quarter inch. That's mounted in the machine in a collet, and this is an ER11 collet. This happens to be a quarter inch one, so that fits that. And this collet mounts into what's called a collet nut, and if you do it correctly, it snaps into place, and it'll be roughly flush. Let's look at one more thing. It's, it's easier to see now. This is a collet. When you place the bit into the collet, make sure you don't go past uh, the flute. So I normally try to keep that collet face a 32nd or a 16th from the edge of there. If you push it up here too far, sometimes that can cause the bit to break. Okay, I want to put the router bit into the spindle, but I'm going to turn the power off to the machine first. Okay, I've got the collet nut uh, and the collet assembled. Start that in the threads. Then I slide the bit in, get it set to the right height, and start tightening it till it snugs. Okay. Then we'll put one wrench on the shaft and one on the nut. And we'll tighten it. Turn that on. Okay, one of the tests I like to do now, we haven't ran the machine yet, is to turn the spindle on and off. And it's really done here with the on off button. I press it, it turns the spindle on. Press it again, it turns it off. Okay. Now I control the spindle speed also with the controller. This turns the spindle on and off. And the combination of the on off button and Z plus or Z minus actually toggles it to different speeds. If I want to speed it up, press those and release them, press those and release them, press those and release them. Okay, the spindle display that you see on here basically uh, tells us uh, the RPMs of the spindle. So I'm going to turn it on first. Okay, now that number that you see, 
That's 400, so 400 times 60, because it's 60 cycle current, is 24,000. Now, as I toggle these down, you'll see the RPMs drop. So by pressing the buttons on the control, I'm actually controlling the spindle RPM, but that display tells you what RPM is, or you can calculate the RPM from. And S5 is 300, so 300 times 60 is 18,000 RPMs. Okay, S1 is the slowest spindle speed. Well, the display tells us it's 100, so 100 times 60, that means the spindle at the lowest speed is turning 6,000 RPMs. Then as we toggle it up, it jumps up uh, 50 times, it jumps up 300 RPMs per increment. So when you get it, maximum speed, S7, it's turning 24,000 RPMs. Now let's look at the table on the Laguna IQ CNC. These uh, one inch pieces of MDF are actually designed to be uh, replaceable and sacrificial. Uh, one thing you can do is you can fly cut them if you want to make sure everything's perfectly level. That comes in real handy when you're machining acrylic plastic and you want to cut through the plastic but not the paper. They're also screwed down. If you notice, each one of these has three screws. Those are actually into threaded nuts underneath, so that's replaceable. If you want to take this out and make a custom table, you can screw it down to the table. This is also a T-slot table, and I'll show you how that works. A T-slot system's got several parts. One is you have the clamp bar itself, and you have a post here that pretty much uh, determines the height. All right, now this other bolt slips into this track, into the T-slot track and then the wing nut goes here. So you, that's one way you can actually fixture things and, and that's what we'll use today. Uh, you could also use double stick tape and whatever. We've got everything set up on the machine. We put the tool in. Uh, now let's, uh, let's cut this panel. It should be on the controller, uh, but let, we need to learn a couple more fundamentals of how you operate one of these machines. I want to talk to you about the next concept, and that's what's called the origin. So the origin basically gives me an ability to shift from the home position to really anywhere within a work envelope. Now, what we've got to figure out is this sample file, where was it set? Well, it happens to be set so that the origin is in the center of the panel. So what we did was we drew diagonal so we know roughly where the center is. So my next step is to jog the machine over so that the center of the tool is over that origin. Okay. Okay, now what I've done is I've jogged the machine over and brought it down fairly close to the surface so that I can see the little mark. That's going to be the origin, and I'm going to move it a little bit in Y until I get it right over there, okay? Once that's done, this is real important. Once that's done, I hit the button on the controller that says it's, it's the button number four. It also says X, Y, and then an arrow and zero. I press that, and that sets the origin. Now, that origin represents where X0, Y0 is in your drawing. So in this particular case where we're cutting our sign, that was the center. The draw X0, Y0 is in the center of the panel. Now sometimes it's on the lower left corner. Now a good way to verify it, once I've got it set, it's basically in the home position. The green button that says OK also says origin. If I press that, the machine goes to the origin. Okay, now there's one other concept uh, that I want to show you, and, and when you look at the control, I see it says 1X, 1Y, 1Z. If I hold the menu and zero button down and release it, that switches to AX, AY, AZ. Those are the machine coordinates, so those are in reference to the home switch, all right? And the 1X, 1Y, 1Z is the origin, so it's in reference to another setting. So I just toggle those back and forth, and you can actually have up to nine different origins. We typically don't anymore, but, but you could have nine different work offsets on the table. So you hold those two buttons, the menu and the high, low, zero button, hold those down, release them together, and it'll toggle between the origin and the machine coordinates. So that's what those do. Okay, when you set the origin, it's very important that these 1X, 1Y, 1Z values are up. Hold it down, release it, there's the machine coordinates. Hold it down, release it, there's the origin coordinates. 
Okay, we really have one final thing to set up before we're uh, ready to run this sample program. And that, that final thing is to tell the machine where the top of this surface is. And that's called touching off. And there's really two ways to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jog it down to just about to that surface. So that's Z minus. Now I'm just momentarily pressing Z minus and I, until it just contacts the material. When it's there, when it's touching that surface. Now, I press the button, it's number eight, it says Z with an arrow zero. That just set that as, this becomes uh, Z zero. There's a much easier way to touch the tool off and that's using the puck. So let's look at that. This is the puck. It's held in place with a little magnet that so holds like that, right? So now what we want to do first is let's verify that everything's connected because we haven't really used it. And to do that, to make that work, I basically hold the menu and on off button together and release them. And when I do, you'll see the spindle start coming down. Now let's touch the tool and, all right, and it retracts. So now we know that works. Okay, that ensures the electrical connection to the puck is correct. Now let's use the puck to actually touch the tool off. Okay, we're not running dust collection on this, so you can really see the tool cut. There is a dust collector shroud available as an optional item. Okay, everything's set up on the machine. We've set the origin for the program. We've touched our tool off. Now it's time to run a program. So here's how you do that. There's a button at the bottom that says, run, pause, delete. You press that button and two things come up. It says choose file, U-disk means USB drive, which plugs in here, and the other is enter files. Since this program is on the inner file that we're going to run, we'll select that and we'll hit OK. And the name of the program is IQHHC2. That's the program we're going to run. And we'll select that and we'll hit OK again. And it will actually check all the code before it runs and then we should see it start cutting. some of this off. Wow. Now that is absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now we've cut our sample piece. It matches the original so that means we know everything's correct on the machine. So now we've, we, we've proven that. Now we're ready to make stuff. If you have the IQ Pro model it has the BNR controller. The fundamentals are the same. Origin means the same, home means the same, touching tools off are the same. The procedure that you achieve that is slightly different on the control. Just refer to the owner's manual and it, it tells you how to do each of those steps. Now, maintenance wise, here's what you need to do with the machine. Of course, keep, keep things dusted off. Um, also, periodically lubricate the ball screws and the guide rails. It doesn't take a whole lot of lubrication because actually excess lubrication attracts sawdust. Uh, there's also a ball screw in the center underneath, so you need to make sure that one's cleaned and uh, lubricated. And last but not least, check and make sure the water level in your 
co uh, cooling tank is correct and that it's clean. If it gets dirty, replace it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. We wanted to create a video to show you how to set your machine up from the time it comes off the truck till you're making your first part. If you have any questions, contact us at lagunatools.com or call our 800-234-1976 phone number. Thanks for buying the Laguna CNC.